member statements. The member for Stormont, Dundas, so Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, the Mental Health Commission of Canada hosted their first Father's Day at the Park reception here at Queen's Park. Not only did this reception focus on men's mental health and the unique challenges they face, it also offered a safe and supportive environment for guests to gather and have conversations about mental health. We were honoured to have Steve Jones as a guest speaker sharing invaluable insights into his personal journey and contributing to destigmatizing mental health. As Father's Day approaches, let's make a concerted effort to check in with our fathers, sons and brothers. The stigma surrounding mental health often deters men from seeking help, contributing to higher rates of suicide among men. It is critical to recognize that while women attempt suicide twi twice as often as men, men die by suicide three times as often. Speaker. Societal expectations of toughness and just dealing with it can discourage men from seeking help, leading them to resort to destructive coping mechanisms. Our government has improved and expanded the supports in our roadmap to wellness. Since 2019, we've invested $525 million in new annualized funding for mental health and addiction services. I'd like to thank Minister Tobolo, MPP Gretzky, MPP Bowman, and MPP Schreiner for their attendance and contributions to this event, Speaker. This important topic is not, is not a partisan one and extends across all party platforms. Thank you to all members, staff, guest speakers, and stakeholders who were able to attend, even if it was just for a brief moment. Your support truly matters. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. This week, I met with the National Council of Canadian Muslims to discuss the rise of Islamophobia in Ontario, of the multiple incidents of violence targeting Muslim communities and mosques of the hundreds of cases of mistreatment of Muslim and Palestinian staff and students in schools across Ontario, often directly connected to the conflict in Gaza. Their experience mirrors the calls and emails we are receiving in our office from residents who are devastated by the loss of life and security in Gaza and fear the worrying rise in discrimination here in Ontario, which is far bigger than official statistics because most hate crimes and hate incidences in Ontario go unreported. Public dialogue about the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza has been so divisive and has harmed relationships between neighbours, colleagues, friends and Ontarians. The National Council of Canadian Muslims has been clear in what they want Ontario legislators to do. Take proactive steps to halt the harassment and discrimination of Muslim, Arab and Palestinian Ontarians by reviving and passing the Our London Family Act, which includes an anti-hate strategy for the province and changes to education. It is a request that I support. It is a move that many of us in the legislature support. It is a concrete step we can take to advance peace and diversity here in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to share two significant milestones for the residents of Brampton. The first milestone I want to celebrate is our government bringing a second hospital to Brampton. A request for qualifications has been issued to select the qualified team to design and build the project, which will include a multi-story patient tower, expanded clinics, and Brampton's second emergency department. Once complete, the community will be well served by a world-class hospital which will deliver the comprehensive health care that the residents of Brampton deserve. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the second milestone I'm pleased to share in the progress is the progress being made on bringing the first school of medicine in the province in 15 years wow. and over 150 years in GTA, Mr. Speaker, it will find its home at the Toronto Metropolitan University. Our government is ensuring the next generation of medical professionals will be trained in Brampton, in Ontario, for Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to the partners involved in these projects. Thank you to Dr. Frank Martino from William Osler Health Team and Mohammed Lachimi from the Toronto Metropolitan University. Your visions and collaboration have made these achievement advancements possible, and the people of Ontario will be better supported because of our work together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. 
Mind Mill Unifor Local 598 members from Sudbury, including the members from Sudbury's dads, travelled to the headquarters of Jarlett Health Services on Monday to hold an information picket in support of the workers at the Elizabeth Centre in Valcaran. Why did union members from Sudbury get on a bus early in the morning, travel three hours to Minden Speaker? Because the workers at the Elizabeth Centres have been without a collective agreement since 2022. Two long years. This is happening under this government's watch. With so little resources at the Minister of Labour, once an employer asks for arbitration, it doesn't take days, weeks or months. It takes years. That's right, Speaker. Retiree and workers on their day off travel down to the headquarters to remind management that these workers are without a contract. The Elizabeth Center is a long-term care home in my riding. They house 128 residents. The uniform members working there look after frail, elderly residents. They are dealing with the same cost of living challenges that every other Ontarian face. Many of them can barely afford rent, never mind a car payment. They need a new collective agreement now. But here we are, two years after their last contract ended, these workers are left to wait, wait and wait some more. I hope this government agrees that this must stop. These workers need a new collective agreement, and they need a collective agreement right now. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I commend our government effort to integrate youth into skilled trade amid the high unemployment and labour shortage. This is a big game change for Scarborough Centre youth. Significant enhancement in the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, supported by the Ministry of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development, and the Ministry of Education. We launched uh, 68 new pre-apprenticeship programs for 2024-25, now engaging over 1,700 participants, with women comprising of 30% of skilled trade in the labor force. We have also expanded the apprenticeship program to include recruit across 800 schools and introducing a mandatory technological education credit for high school graduates beginning in September 2024. Our Premier and the Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development, Ministry of Education, various unions, community partners have been instrumental in achieving this. Now, 1.3 million pe people work in skilled trade with over $1.5 billion invested since 2020. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Right. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to a dear friend, Colleen Wake. As the youngest of six siblings, she was lovingly referred to by her family as the baby sister. Her sons, Alex and Colleen, along with her family, are deeply saddened by the loss of their beloved mother and sister. Colleen joined Kinsman London Club in 1996, and she immediately took on roles of leadership in public speaking, was elected to an executive level, and then as a governor. Under her leadership, the District 1 team launched the Portraits of Honour, as well as the Kin team received the DQ Fee District Award for Outstanding Leadership and Administration. In 2022, she received the Kin Lifetime Membership. Beyond her volunteer work, Colleen was an NDP supporter. Colleen worked at Cami Automotive. At work, she learned sign language to support a colleague with hearing challenges to demonstrate her dedication to her co-workers. Her many accomplishments reflected her heart, her hard work, intelligence, and fun-loving spirit. Despite her leadership qualities, Colleen always said she wouldn't run for politics. She would tell me, I can't put up with that stuff. <laughs> Our thing was going to movie nights, and that was filled with laughter. I always bought a noisy bag of licorice candy to open during the movie, because she would shush me, and that was a joke between the us. If she knew I was making the statement about her, she'd say, don't make a big deal about me. And I would say to her, you meant so much to everyone you connected with, and you changed lives without even knowing. Your kindness and willingness to help others and your relentless honesty, whether we wanted to hear it or not, made a difference. Colleen never gave up on people and never gave up on love. Rest in peace, my dear friend.
very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, the Thornhill Presbyterian Church celebrated their 175th anniversary, marking 175 years as a vibrant, multicultural, and intergenerational congregation. You know, from its humble beginnings on Young Street to its current location, just down the road from my office, the church is a testament to a solid and historic area with almost two centuries of community stewardship. Historically, picnics were literally gala events and one of the social highlights at the TPC. Football matches, bicycle races, strawberry socials, it all happened on the ground. Speaker, this congregation played a pivotal role in the foundations leading to modern-day Thornhill. In 1885, Toronto's first commuter railway, the Metropolitan Radial Railway York Simcoe, was opened just steps away from the church. And if we look back as early as the 19th century, the location served as a critical junction for transportation. It was the natural pit stop for travelers moving north. Uh, a member of the congregation who also worked at the Ontario uh, Department of Highways ensured that local pictures of the radio car included a photo of the church. E.J. Sands Elementary School was named after Eilert Sand, also a member and school superintendent back in the 1950s. His son, who I've met, late, uh, Richard, later went on to be a minister at the church. There is so much history in Thornhill, and as my father used to say, sometimes you have to look behind you before you know where you're going. Thank you, Reverend he Heather and the congregation for your hospitality as we celebrated 175 years at Thornhill Presbyterian. May there be 175 more. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Vanier. Mr. Speaker, last week I joined the residents of Ottawa Vanier as they kicked off the summer with festivities across the riding. I attended the popular summer fest in Beacon Hill alongside Mayor Sutcliffe, MP Fortier, and Councillor Tim Turney, and Community Association presidents Heather Scott and Jeff Kaluski. Everyone enjoyed the weather, the activities, the free hot dogs, and of course, the traditional cake, which I had fun serving. At the Beechwood Market summer opening, I connected with neighbors and bought local goods, witnessing vibrant community spirit. The Velo Fest in Vanier, hosted by Club Optimist, was again a hit this year, with several families winning brand new bicycles. A special thanks to Club Optimist for their constant contributions to our community. The wonderful lobster dinner organized by the Club Richelieu was also very successful. Several volunteers and students from L'Ecole Elementaire Publique Le Prélude tended to all the guests, and the band performance by the school was simply a delight. June will continue to be busy with AGM's graduation ceremonies, fundraising events, tea party, and so much more. As we are nearing the end of our parliamentary session, I want to wish to all my colleagues here in the House a great summer in your respective communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Renfrew, Nipissing Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. After the Dunkirk evacuation in 1940, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill knew that victory over Germany would only be achieved with a future invasion of continental Europe. After the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor and the subsequent declaration of war by the United States against the Axis powers, that invasion and the planning of it became a reality. The attack, codenamed Operation Overlord, began on June 6, 1944. Approximately 150,000 Allied troops landed or parachuted into the invasion area on D-Day, including 14,000 Canadians on Juneau Beach. It was the largest seaborne invasion ever attempted in history. After securing the beaches at, at a great cost, the Normandy campaign began. As the Americans battled on the western end of the front and struggled to take the prized port city of Cherbourg, the British and Canadians waged war around the Norman capital city of Caen. My father was one of those soldiers. The Normandy campaign finally ended on the 21st of August 1944, with Canadians playing an important role in the closing the Follies Gap. After D-Day, more than two million soldiers landed in France, ensuring an Allied victory and the defeat of Nazi Germany. Tomorrow, we celebrate the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. Let us all take time to remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice 
and also those who came home to build the great country we know today, securing the freedoms that we sometimes take for granted but are ever grateful for, lest we forget. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Thanks, uh, thanks Speaker. Uh, today I rise to uh, recognize a, a very special anniversary in my riding of Leeds Granville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. This past Saturday, uh, Tony Otta Public Schools celebrated their 60th anniversary, and I was pleased to attend the celebration with the current uh, students, staff, faculty, and alumni. There were 13. Uh, special speakers that, uh, that shared remarks and memories, including uh, Hugh Bates, who was the very first principal at that school in 1964. He also opened the school's time capsule. Uh, speaker, I was even more thrilled to attend the celebration with uh, two of my grandchildren, uh, Mila and Georgie, who are proud Tony Atta Tigers. Uh, my wife, Deanna, and I were very proud that, in, in addition to Mila and Georgie, all five of our children attended this uh, amazing school. Speaker, the celebration was emotional, knowing that it's Tony Atta's final anniversary. At the end of the school year, uh, Tony Atta will merge with the Commonwealth Public School to form the brand new Swiftwaters Elementary in Brockville, a state-of-the-art facility that will open its doors in September. I want to congratulate uh, Tony Atta Principal Tanya Stolver and all the staff there for this amazing milestone in your history. I want to thank you for all the things you do, all the great things you do for our kids and our communities. I felt really privileged to uh, be able to represent it. Happy anniversary, Tony Atta Public School. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.